Hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wen. Today, I want to share a story with you about Amy. I met Amy a few months ago. She's 29 years old, lives in the city, and just like us, dreams for her future. But last year, three words from her doctor changed her entire life. You have cancer. She was totally shocked, worried, and upset about all of the uncertainty that the disease brought to her. Cancer treatment is not an easy process. Most patients have side effects during and after treatment, like fatigue, weakness, nausea, dizziness, and pain. Cancer treatment is not only the heart of um, a patient's physical health, but their, but their mental and emotional health can also suffer. You definitely need someone to be there, at least to make sure you have food to eat, Amy said to me. Because of the compromised immune system, Amy has to spend most of her time at home. This physical isolation means that she can't hang out with her friend, pursue her goals, and make the most of her life. Just like Amy, there are 60,000 young adults facing the similar challenge every year in the US, which means this disease is affecting a huge number of people that could have a bright future. A few challenges make this even more difficult for Amy. Like many other young adult cancer patients, she lives far away from her parents and family who might be able to support her. She has the support of her husband, but he works every day. Then I ask Amy, so how, you deal, how do you deal with these difficulties? Your family is not here, your husband needs to work. Have you asked your friends? She paused for a second and said, Actually, my friend, they're super nice and helpful, but it's just hard for me to ask because I feel like I'm a burden and I don't really want to interrupt my friend's schedule. Emma, one of Amy's best friends told me, I really want to help her, but I don't always know what I can do. Sometimes I asked, but I also concerned that she might be too tired and it's better not to bother her. And when other friends come to me and ask about her, I don't always know the answer. At that moment, I realized that there's a disconnect. Young adult cancer patients who are under treatment often have difficulties communicating what they need. And at the same time, friends would like to offer support, but they don't know what to do. What if I can make the communication process between them easier? With that question in my mind, and to understand the situation that patients are facing and the need they have, I immersed myself in this environment, visiting hospitals, talking to patients, their family members, friends, healthcare providers. Here are the four most important things I have learned. Patients often need the most help with daily life activities one or two days after having chemotherapy and some of the needs reoccur after each chemo. Friends usu uh, patients usually have one close friend within their friend circle who becomes the point person that connects the patients to other friends. It is easier for patients to be offered help than to ask for help. And because patients spend most of their time at home, the most common way for them to connect with their friend is through the phone. So, put all of this inside together. I designed Peer Up for Cancer. It is an app that bridges the gap between the patient's need and their friend's desire to help. Through Peer Up, patients can invite their friends to join their support network create their own categories about their needs, post a need, share schedule with their friend, and receive caring message from friends. 
Let's see how Pierre Up can help Amy. She finds out about Pierre Up while waiting for her chemo session to start. She's curious and wants to try it with her best friend. So she downloads this app and invites Emma to be the contact person of her support network. She then thinks about uh, she then thinks about the needs she often has after chemo. So for example, she, the last few times she didn't even have the energy to prepare the food for herself. And now with Peer Up, she can ask her friends to help with it. By asking them me at once, she won't have to worry about it when she feels extremely tired. And at the other side, Emma knows exactly what Amy needs and what to, when to deliver it. She picks up grocery and makes lunch for Amy that day. Sometimes Emma can't help Amy, but with her permission, she asks other friends to help out. As a main contact person, Emma can invite more friends to join Amy's support network. Together, they can figure out how to make Amy's life easier. Several days after, Emma wants to know when Amy's next chemotherapy is. She just needs to open the calendar on the app. Here, she finds out that this will be that will be on Friday. To encourage her, Emma sent Amy a funny video and says, "Let me know if you need any help after chemo." Amy is so glad to receive the message. She feels loved and supported. I test to peer up with a group of patients and their friends using Messenger. Here's the feedback I got. A patient said to me that I feel it was easier because I know my friend has an understanding that they're going to be helping me. And during the testing process, a patient asked her friend for help finding a wheelchair, but none of them could find one. I used to think friend not being able to fulfill patient's need could be a limitation for the tool. But I found that even when friends could not help, the patients still feel thankful because they all tried to figure it out together. One of friends uh, shared with me that I love this idea because it gives me the ability to know what they need and how I can help them. And a patient's sister said, I think the more hands that are willing to help, the easier the patient and the car caregiver's life will be. Instead of having three people, it would be nice to have 10 people to help out with some less personal needs, such as transportation, groceries, and, or even just to send some funny video or send a message, something to make her smile. This support network can start with just a few close friends. And the close friends could invite other friends to join if the patients need it. This could eventually lead to better mental and physical health outcomes. I will continue developing and testing the app and work with social workers in hospitals to make the, the app fit for the current cancer care system. As friends, we can't control this disease, but together, we can help patients take control of their lives so they can pay attention to what is truly important for them, their health. To make it happen, I invite you to peer up for cancer. Thank you.